Hey guys, it's Celine again. Thursday this time. So, part two, okay, to the other one about Asmo days and all that stuff. I am trying to find a way to reconnect to that video, share a couple of other things, and share different kinds of experiences that I've been having since also because of talking about this stuff okay um it's a bit much <laughs> i find this quite difficult i have revisited my previous video and rewatched it and just took notes again because i can't keep track of my own shit <laughs> sometimes well i think the core thing that i need to talk about more is this derealization concept, okay? And that's what I started off with in my part one. So I think I'd like to come back to that. And I would, at this point, suggest that the dissociation, which is basically, in my interpretation, the main mechanism, the main... A sort of an idea, the main description for all those kinds of states, okay, where we are not fully aware, we are being, our minds are being kept busy, parts of us are emotional parts are being kept busy behind the scenes, and there's not enough energy, and we're not capable of being fully here. It's dissociation is the mechanism that is used to describe that kind of a state. Derealization or depersonalization are sort of different scenarios in the same kind of a story, in the same kind of a field. And I've had the most severe derealization uh, and I think depersonalization also, um, which is, to me, it feels like it's more or less the same kind of thing. However, there are descriptions in um, the sources online also, which you can find, where the, the, the description they give is that you lose con contact with your own body. That's never happened for me. It was never that I wasn't aware if someone touches me, I know that that's happening. And I can, you know, feel intentions. I'm quite empathic towards other people as well. It's not that I do not see them. It's not that I don't register. You know, those kinds of descriptions occur, also are given a lot of the time. Um, so I don't know at this point at all. How much of my experience, certainly as I gave it yesterday with the whole demonology dimension and all that weird stuff, you know, how much of that is going to be any use to anybody out there? Um, or to what extent the thing that happened for me with this rather extraordinary meditation process that I went through, you know, to what extent that is actually uh, common to more, the, will, the future will have to tell whether this kind of thing uh, would actually work for other people or whether Chud, the Tibetan, you know, uh, feeding the demons kind of an approach actually works in the same way, has the same integrating kinds of results for people. I never I, if you if you try quite hard, you can find intel, in, uh, information about uh, what Chud is. And these days, there's a lot of people who use that, who, are, who work on that. You never find um, results from doing the process, the practice, afterwards, anywhere. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying very hard <laughs> to come up with... Uh, with some um, some form, some way of talking about these things, where what I notice, okay, what I keep coming back to 
is that the the reality of life as it was the lack of integration the fragmentation that's another very well-known term okay inside for me it went very deep and it i've had sort of this confidence during the process during the practices that i've been working with over the past uh, couple of years ever since i started my tumor journey i think that no matter how much i was pulled apart no how uh strong all the influences were that i was dealing with and i had no clue how far this whole journey was going to take me at the time i swear it was it's always been a big guess but i've always been confident i've always had some level of inner certainty that there was going to be a middle a core a a core part that i could find that um i could call my own okay i have never really believed in the spook the the ghost the horror of the derealization not completely i've always fought it off i've always fought this sensation of going completely powerless of being i don't think that being powerless is um it's a default mechanism or it's a, a freeze mechanism from trauma and so on and so forth all that is you know some of people who are, who are uh, familiar with those kinds of uh situations you know what i mean okay so i've always felt that there should be there should or there might be there would be obviously somehow there would there was going to be a way for me to find a path where i would put the pieces together find more of my own core and each time i do that i'm challenged to question everything else i have done because you can feel the difference and this is a fairly recent development actually where i uh over the past couple of years i have been through phases where this has been happening where i encounter inside myself the the core of me okay the it sounds so narcissistic to be talking about myself the whole time i don't even like doing that so much it's but i need to i need to describe this okay let me just i'm just going to keep trying for 5 more minutes if it doesn't work i'm out of here <laughs> um i'm not supposed to be this fragmented not now or not ever i fight the sensation of being fragmented i hate feeling so fragmented feeling like uh my energy is all over the place like my mind is drawn in this way and that way and whatever anybody wants to say to me i just hobble along or i just fly with the wind in all directions nothing gets done there's nothing that gets nothing belongs to me i'm an extreme case of that when nothing belongs to me i don't belong anywhere and nothing belongs to me that's one way of putting it this is all dissociative state this is all fragmentation you know that's what those states are called and it doesn't hurt the whole time which is more of a, of a problem because if it hurts you're more inclined to fight it you're more inclined to to say okay i will want this to last as little time as possible because this is unbearable i don't like this most of the time um i have spent years decades in a state of inner personal numbness where i didn't belong to anything nothing belonged to me and i was just it was a free for all you know anybody could make use of me they could just push me and shove me and 
in my previous video I described uh, rather rather uh, powerfully I think <laughs> some of the how how a lot of this energy actually had to do with physically you know in in my whole you know being born being the born of these two weird parents with this weird weird astrological game going on it's just too weird for words okay how that worked out for me and then sort of digging my way into that to get to a personal core of myself that was sort of like a filament, like a tendril, like hardly existent. And yet the me that I need is in there, in like this wisp of grey smoke, okay? Between, because I was made, I was born, I'm a person. I may seem quite, you know, mentally capable and all that stuff <laughs> but it's those are tools that i've learned to use i am capable of using the hands and the and the language it's all you know the brain works in all those ways the me that i need to not feel dissociated the core me that i really really need to not feel dissociated does not live in my brain for me okay it's my story it's difficult terrain it's hard to describe <laughs> i believe it lives in my cells in my body most of the of the energy is actually there the clue that happened that come out comes out of this previous video of mine and of this whole chud thing and this asmodeus business for me is that I'm in a position now because of the exercises and the meditation and all that stuff, the process. I'm in the position that I can give more energy to that tendril, that filament of the core, real core self. Looks like I'm finally getting somewhere here. So, talking about it, online actually unsettled me again and over the past 24 hours or so I had to come back pull back in my mind to this place of contact okay I'm going to describe what happened this morning for you just quickly quickly it's the most important part really because it turns out that every fragment of us, and especially those core fragments, no matter how little voice they've had in our lives, this fragment had no voice in my life. It had nothing to say. It didn't have an opinion. It didn't have any, it didn't have any, any growth at all to it. I have never grown as a person from there. I'm jealous of everybody who, who did, <laughs> kind of. I'm just, as I sit here, basically, or as I have sat here in front of my camera on this channel of mine, I have been uh, doing a lot of routine and things, things I learned how to do. Things I learned how to do. And... There was just like this much wanting to do those things, which is why also I'm not really very energetic on my channel. I'm not really all that expressive, you know, because it was lacking in that personal core department. The good news is if you put energy into the personal core, it comes alive. And this is what happened this morning, which was so fabulous for me. I could get close to that, try to, um, to put out some, some energy, some, you know, because it's not that the other part of me isn't real, the, the rational, the, you know, the one that's talking that now, that's not, it's not that it isn't real or that it isn't motivated. It's just that it's lacking in a fundamental link 
to myself somehow. Most of what I do tends to be rather, you know, rational, reasonable, not taking any sides kind of a wave approach of life, you know? So there's never really any, I'm, I don't fight for things. I let things happen. I'm an ideal kind of a target or victim that way. The cool thing that happened this morning was that I could feel more of that sort of a gray little character sitting deep inside me and that it could feel the other me as much as I could feel it. And there was even a moment or a couple of moments, different distinct moments, where there was a response. There was an actual, like, something I would describe now as a wanting. It, it, the it me. It sounds really schizo. It, I know, okay. That's what fragmentation is like. The it me wanted to be closer to this me, to the grown-up sort of a me that I am. It's difficult to write. I realize that this much must be even more difficult to listen to than the other one. And if you're doing this, wow. <laughs> I mean, somebody has to make these kinds of videos, I suppose. It's just also quite painful. I don't mind telling you. Because I never really had a chance. I had no chance. No, None of them had a chance. And none of this was decided by a single person. But you wonder what kind of a life you could have had. How could I have contributed to life? How could I have built things that I am not capable of building at the moment? I am trying to get back in touch with that part of me. And it is working. And I can feel it. Each time I really purposefully engage with it. And it's like an exercise where nothing else exists at that moment. No cards. No crochet. No videos. No journaling. It's just sort of very gently digging into that earth inside of me. Okay. And then there's a there's a reaction. There's a there's a part of me that, that sort of it goes like this inside. Of course it does. Because we are all we inside, okay? The me that is we. <laughs> we're all the same. It's not that we're enemies. This is just a part of me that I really, really need. Uh, that needs food. It needs the energy. And the best way to get the energy to it is by paying attention to it. And so that's what I'm trying to do here also with my video. And... Um, I didn't talk about my Amanita incense yet, did I? Because I did another attempt before and then I sort of stranded with my vlog. And in that one, <laughs> so I'm trying to remember now, I didn't talk about the incense with the, with the mushroom yet. I hope. God, this is so disconnected. I'm going to skip that. Because that was powerful as well. And it was helpful. And maybe I should just go ahead and burn some more. Because of the... Uh, the ease that that brings. The... the uh, there's a change that happens then. And it just helps you to... To figure that out. Then again, I am rather against using any type of material help from the outside if you can nothing will replace me taking this 
seriously nothing else can do that i have to do this reconnecting and this focusing and this refueling of this inner self part yeah i just have to make sure that that is the most important thing i do during the day it's also kind of exhausting and challenging to uh to talk about when you don't feel completely certain that you've completed what it is you're supposed to be doing <laughs> i tell you i have no idea i hope this isn't too confusing and too too horrible to watch i will um i will just try to leave it at this for now because i'm actually telling myself that i know now okay that this next part is really important where i keep this at the forefront of my mind even if i do other things even if i'm you know uh busy with other things i'm also working on my uh lovely witch's mantle with uh all the yarn that i've been spinning on my spindles during the summer i said i was going to bring um of course that's the back side this is the front side not that it matters that much it's not really very different uh, this has all sorts of yarns that are made with um, with spindles earlier in the year. It contains a lot of alpaca yarn and some silk and so on. And um, I love working on this. It's kind of like the same wavelength as looking for this. It, it's very peaceful and very quiet. And that helps, you know. So, yeah, a lot of my life is quite like that you know very very easy going <laughs> on the outside there's a lot of focus involved and um focusing against it's funny isn't it that you're not focusing against derealization you're focusing on your own core it's the hardest thing in the world because everybody, the whole of the universe, the whole of society, at least ways, is out to make you be distracted. So, yeah. So, I'm ending this right here, right now. Thank you for watching, if you have. Thank you. And I will uh, be back out with um, whatever happens then next. Okay? See you then. Thank you. Bye.